Hi, I'm Ernest Young, and today I want to talk about convective burning drop model for liquid rocket combustion chambers. A little bit about myself, I'm Ernest Young. Uh, I received my Bachelor of Science in Physics from Caltech, and my most recently my Master's of Science in Theoretical and Mathematical Physics from Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich. I am currently actively seeking opportunities in propulsion development engineering, in particular uh, liquid um, rocket engine design and propulsion. The setup is as follows. We have a combustion chamber uh, attached and after the combustion chamber is a nozzle. Uh, we are injecting uh, fuel and oxidizer through an injection plate. The fuel is in two phases, uh, a gas phase and a liquid phase. Uh, the oxidizer, we will assume, is completely in the gas phase in the combustion chamber uh, because of the high temperatures in the combustion chamber. Uh, now, fuel is par partially in the gas phase because uh, we can usually run, run what's called uh, fuel rich and have lower temperatures for the combustion chamber uh, if we do so. To dramatize uh, the physical setup, here's a photo of a injection plate. Uh, what you, you should notice is that um, inside, um, in the inner rings of the injection plate, there are small little holes through which uh, the fuel as a, in its liquid phase is injected in um, and they come out as droplets. So what we'll be considering is an idealized uh, combustion chamber uh, idealized in one dimension, uh, namely the x-axis along the axis of the combustion chamber uh, represented by x. Uh, x equals zero will start at the injection plate where um, gas uh, and liquid, the fuel and the oxidizer is injected in. To remind ourselves, uh, we'll remind ourselves of the definition of the equivalence ratio. Uh, the definition of the equivalence ratio phi uh, is equal to the mass of the fuel over the mass of the oxidizer in the numerator and in, in the denominator, the mass of the fuel over the mass of the oxidizer, but in a stoichiometric reaction. A uh, stoichiometric reaction meaning that the chemical reaction goes to completion uh, there are no more reactants. Uh, so below is an example of a chemical reaction involving methane, uh, molecular oxygen, and CO2 and H2O. So as an example, if we wanted to calculate the denominator for phi um, using this uh, stoichiometric uh, reaction, then we would take the mass of the uh, one methane molecule uh, divided by the mass of two molecular oxygen uh, molecules uh, and then we would attain the denominator and as this uh, chemical formula alludes to uh, we'll first be considering fuel as uh, methane as our fuel and liquid oxygen as our oxidizer the liquid drop in model is as follows we have two phases. Uh, one phase is the gas phase uh, consisting of both oxidizer in its gas phase and fuel as in its gas phase. Uh, the thermodynamic state of this gas phase system is completely specified by Tg, uh, the temperature of the gas, uh, P, which is the combustion chamber pressure, which we take to be constant throughout the combustion chamber, and Fiji, that equivalence ratio between uh, fuel to oxidizer. The second phase is the liquid phase, and we consider the droplet to represent that liquid phase. The dr so what's going on with the droplet is at its surface, uh, fuel in its liquid phase is evaporating away, going into the gas phase uh, at a mass flow rate of dot ml. The thermodynamic state of the liquid droplet is completely determined by 
T boil and the chamber pressure P through the Clausius Clapeyron relation, uh, which is the liquid vapor uh, phase trans transition, it describes that. Um, we can obtain uh, T boil uh, from P uh, because, as you can see with the Clausius Clapeyron relation, there, uh, there's a one to one relation between uh, pressure P and temperature T. Uh, so we'll get the temperature at which um, the liquid boil, uh, the fuel boils at, at a given pressure, uh, which will be the chamber pressure P. Uh, one thing you should know uh, is T naught is usually the uh, temp temperature at which our fuel boils at, but at a standard pressure, um, say for instance, uh, one atmosphere. But here we want the temperature at which the fuel boils at at a higher usually higher pressure the combustion chamber pressure uh, big P uh, we also have rho L which characterizes the liquid droplet which is the uh, density uh, in this liquid phase um, also note in the classic Capelron relation we have HFG which is latent heat of vaporization uh, which is the energy or the heat uh, required to bring one uh, molecule of our fuel from the liquid phase into the gas phase. In this talk, uh, I don't want to emphasize much the explicit derivation and the mathematical derivation of all the formulas that are going to be involved, but to point out bits and pieces to emphasize the physics of what's going on and to emphasize the spirit that uh, we're using uh, you know, simple physical considerations and, you know, uh, first principle physics to arrive at a model for um, our combustion chamber. So let's take a look at uh, BOQ and let's just start off with, uh, BOQ is in the middle, and let's start off with CPG uh, times T infinity minus TS. Uh, CPG is the heat capacity under constant pressure of the gas. Now let's take a look at our picture. So what's going on is uh, we have a droplet at uniform temperature because we assume that uh, the droplet uh, very quickly uh, goes into thermal equilibrium. So we have uniform temperature. And that uniform temperature is set by the uh, temperature at a surface, Ts, which we're going to take to be T boil uh, because fuel is evaporating away out from the surface. Now. That fuel, that fuel vapor is uh, first at Ts, which we take to be T ball. Uh, then it meets some oxidizer in the gas that's flowing around at uh, temperature Tg. And then there's a flame, there's combustion. Uh, that com uh, combustion temperature, flame temperature, we're going to be able to calculate out, uh, and that's going to be T infinity. So there's a, a temperature gradient between Ts and T infinity and uh, to bring the fuel vapor to T infinity uh, we're going to need to su supply some heat and that quantity of heat is in CPG in the term CPG times T infinity minus TS. Uh, delta HC um, is the difference of, in enthalpies between the enthalpy of the products to the enthalpy of the reactants. So we already see that BOQ um, and also it involves this term HFG, which was the latent heat of vaporization from before for the Clausius Clapeyron relation. We already see that BOQ involves um, ener so, um, energy balance, uh, and then this so-called evaporation constant K also involves um, this energy balance through BOQ. Uh, it also involves uh, Fourier's law of heating uh, Kg. Um, and so there's a relation that we can make uh, between Fourier's law of heating and um, how fast uh, fuel is leaving the surface, uh, which is represented by dot ml. Now, dot ml uh, from dot ml and through um, the density l uh, uh, of our droplet. Uh, we can relate those quantities into the diameter of the droplet, uh, big D, 
and then finally reach a uh, differential equation uh, dd squared over dx uh, equals minus k over a vd, a vd being the velocity of the droplet. We can also apply energy conservation uh, and we want to account for the uh, total enthalpy, uh, big H tot, um, and it's a sum of the enthalpy, enthalpies in, of the gas and the enthalpy of the liquid, the droplet, uh, and we can take the time derivative uh, of both sides. Now in the second line, we have Q equals zero. That signifies that we want to consider only ad adiabatic uh, flow processes. Uh, so that Q is equal to zero. Uh, we are considering the combustion chamber pressure to be uh, constant, so the differential of pressure dp is equal to zero. Uh, and from thermodynamic relations, then we conclude that uh, h tot h total, it, the differential of that is equal to zero, so it doesn't change throughout uh, the combustion chamber. So we could take the derivative with respect to dx of both sides of the first equation um, and then so we see that uh, d h dot tot over dx is equal to zero uh, and then equate that to the other side on the third line we're using mass conservation uh, the mass that's leaving the liquid droplet all goes into the uh, gas phase uh, and all that mass, yeah, goes along with it. So finally, using Fick's law and uh, some algebraic manipulations, then we obtain a differential equation for the temperature of the gas, uh, dt uh, tg over dx, um, as a function of these parameters uh, involving the enthalpies of the gas phase and the liquid phase, and also involving the mass flow of uh, the gas. We want to consider uh, the force of drag on the liquid droplet. So for example, if uh, Vg, the speed of the gas uh, going out of the combustion chamber, uh, is a lot bigger than a Vd, the speed of the droplet, uh, then Vd minus Vg, if you think of it as a vector, um, points towards back to the inlet. Uh, but the upshot is that because the drag force always acts opposite of the relative velocity of the droplet, uh, then we can see, we see that if Vg is bigger than Vd, then the gas actually helps accelerate the droplet out uh, the droplet out of the combustion chamber and presumably out into the nozzle. And so using F equals MA, then we get this uh, differential equation for uh, VD, DVD uh, over DX. Uh, also note that capital CD is the drag coefficient and it is found through uh, empirical relations. So finally, we have a system of ODEs to solve for uh, involving three dynamical uh, variables, TGD, uh, which is the droplet diameter, or equivalently D squared and VD, um, and TGD and VD are functions of the position of uh, position along the combustion chamber axis x. The chamber parameters we'll consider in uh, this setup uh, for methane are as follows. Um, we have A tot F inject, which is going to be the total cross-sectional area that through which the liquid fuel is injected. How you want to think about that is, remember in the picture with uh, the injection plate and the small little holes, so it's going to be all those, the, to the cross-sectional areas of all those small little holes uh, added up together, and then you get A tot F inject. Uh, 
uh, ACC is the uh, combustion chamber uh, cross-sectional area. LCC is the total length of the uh, combustion chamber. Uh, the values we're going to use here are for ATOT F inject uh, 0 0.0157 ACC 0.157 meters squared and LCC uh, 0.75 meters. The inlet conditions uh, we're going to consider for our methane fuel is as follows. Uh, D naught, which is the initial droplet diameter, is going to range from 50, 30, 50, 80, 100, 200 microns. Uh, and at the inlet, uh, we're going to consider these conditions. Uh, we're going to consider Tg, uh, the temperature for the gas, which is going to be our inlet temperature uh, at the inlet. It's going to be uh, 600 Kelvin. Uh, the combustion chamber is going to have a pressure of 3.4474 uh, megapascals. Uh, Fiji is going to be 0.45 beginning at the inlet. Uh, the droplets will be injected with an initial uh, speed VD of uh, 10 meters uh, per second. Uh, phi overall is uh, the ratio of fuel, which includes gas and liquid uh, over um, oxygen, uh, our oxidizer, and overall it's going to be 1.139. This uh, value will remain the same throughout the combustion chamber just because of mass conservation. There are four other quantities of interest uh, that includes the mass flows for the liquid in the gas phase, uh, the gaseous uh, equivalence ratio and the gas speed, uh, Vg. And we want to consider, uh, we'll be interested in these quantities as they change throughout um, as a function of x throughout the combustion chamber. Now, we, um, we want to first obtain the mass flows uh, at the beginning, x equals 0. Uh, and all we really need uh, to completely determine those quantities are the chamber parameters and the inlet conditions. Uh, we could, for example, see that for Vg, because for Vg at x equals 0, that's going to be uh, dependent upon in the denominator ACC, which is a chamber parameter, and Vg uh, 0, that helps determine uh, MWG, which is the mean molecular weight of the gas. Uh, Mg 0 is an inlet condition. Uh, you know, how much uh, fuel are you putting in as gas uh, over... Uh, the oxidizer. So uh, armed with the initial mass flows, then we can obtain uh, through these formulas um, uh, the mass flows for for the along uh, for as a function of x along the rest of the combustion chamber. Uh, also note that these formulas, uh, these four formulas, were uh, completely determined by uh, mass conservation and the definition of uh, equivalence ratio. Uh, so again, to reiterate, uh, armed with the chamber parameters, inlet conditions, and the initial ma uh, mass flow rates, then after we solve for our system of ODEs, giving us TGD and VD as function of X, then we are able to determine the mass flows uh, for the liquid and the gas, uh, Fg equivalence ratio for the gas, uh, and the gas speed, Vg, um, as a function of x throughout the combustion chamber. This model was implemented in Python, and the Python package, which I call CC Droplet, is available on my GitHub uh, repository of propulsion in a directory called uh, CC Droplet. Uh, again, I implemented this entirely in Python. Uh, namely, I use the NumPy and the SciPy for my uh, ODE integration. Um, I use Pandas for um, data output, and Pandas proved to be uh, really helpful. I use the open source uh, software package uh, Cantera, uh, which is written in C and C++, uh, but has a Python uh, interface. And Cantera is very helpful for uh, transport processes, uh, chemical kinetics, um, thermodynamic calculations, uh, and it's used for combustion um, in several examples. Uh, so here are the results. Uh, so for the for big D, uh, droplet diameter as a function of x, for methane as a fuel, and O2 as an oxidizer, 
for various uh, D knots, uh, initial droplet values from 30, 50, 80, 100 to 200 microns. Uh, here we see D as a function of X. We see that for 80 and below for D naught uh, microns, uh, the droplets die uh, in that uh, the liquid droplets completely evaporate away in the combustion chamber. For 100 microns and above, uh, some of the liquid droplets uh, survive and um, they go out of the combustion chamber and presumably out of the nozzle and just go splat. So this graph helps us because ideally we want to use up all our liquid fuel efficiently uh, and we want to have them all um, Go, th uh, go through complete combustion in the combustion chamber. Here we have a plot of D uh, but normalized to D naught and we see the same uh, behavior uh, for 80 microns and below for D naught uh, then the liquid droplet completely evaporates in the combustion chamber and presumably the uh, combustion uh, com uh, is uh, completed entirely in the combustion chamber uh, and then for 100 uh, microns and above for D naught then uh, some of that uh, liquid droplet uh, goes out of the combustion chamber. Here we have a plot of Tg uh, versus X for methane uh, with O2 as an oxidizer and this graph is important because uh, as we can see with D naught uh, equal 30, 50, and 80 uh, in the near in the beginning of the combustion chamber length, uh, early on in the combustion chamber length, uh, we see that we have steep uh, temperature gradients for Tg, uh, and because Fourier's the form of Fourier's law is such that uh, the gradient of the temperature is uh, proportional to uh, heat, then we have a huge heat transfer transfers in the beginning of the uh, combustion chamber and we can seriously melt our inje uh, injector plate. So that would be a problem um, that we see with smaller uh, D knots. Uh, we have a plot here of VD uh, versus X and we see that uh, for smaller uh, D knots, uh, 30 and 50 uh, uh, microns, uh, it appears that uh, the droplets are accelerated uh, faster and of a larger magnitude to higher uh, drop speeds early on in the combustion chamber than bigger droplets. Here's a plot of uh, mass flows for the liquid uh, .ml along with uh, .ml uh, oxidize, oxidizer versus X. Now we're going to assume that um, Oxidizer is pumped constantly into the uh, combustion chamber and is constant throughout. Uh, so that's why there's that um, constant line above. Uh, below we see how um, dot ml uh, decreases as we uh, continue along the combustion chamber length. Here we have a plot of dot ml mg um, with uh, dot m uh, oxidizer uh, versus x. Uh, here we see that uh, dot mg uh, increases dr dramatically uh, as we go along the combustion chamber. Here we have a plot of Fiji versus X. Uh, the takeaway here is that uh, as uh, the liquid droplet is evaporating away into the gas phase, then uh, Fiji wants to go to Fi overall, uh, which recall was 1.135. Here we have a plot of VG versus X, uh, VG being the velocity of the gas. Uh, and what we can see here immediately is that for D not, for smaller D knots, uh, the gas is uh, accelerated um, quicker and also reach um, its highest uh, gas speeds uh, faster earlier uh, along the combustion chamber. And we have to take this into consideration because out of the combustion chamber um, and into the nozzle, um, we have to care about um, whether or not we want to have low Mach numbers.
um, uh, initially in the nozzle. Here I overlaid a plot of TG uh, versus X uh, and phi G versus X, the equivalence ratio for fuel to oxidizer. And I want to overlay these two graphs uh, be to show that for phi G near and below 1 um, and phi G equals 1 um, signifying a stoichiometric uh, reaction near and below one, then we reach maximum uh, Tg that the um, gas uh, reaches. So for example, uh, I've tried to color code it where uh, blues are Tg and purples uh, gradient is for uh, Fiji. So, but um, same style of line being the same D naught. So for example, for the thin um, stripes for Yes, the thin uh, stripes for D naught equals 50 micron. Uh, we take a look at the thin line for purple of um, D naught equals 50 and see where it's uh, one uh, near one Fiji, and that's about uh, 0.15 along the um, x axis, um, 0.15 uh, meters. And there, around there, we see that for TG, which is in blue, uh, which are the thin uh, stripes, uh, it reaches its maximum of about 3750 uh, Kelvin. So uh, this tells us uh, that uh, right before it reaches complete, um, uh, right before stoichiometric reaction, uh, then uh, the gas um, reaches its maximum uh, temperature. Here I overlay a plot of VG and VD uh, versus X. What I want to emphasize here is that uh, VG is uh, bigger than VD uh, throughout the combustion chamber and VG helps accelerate the droplet along out of the combustion chamber. So for example, for the two solid lines that represent D naught equals 200 microns uh, and the darkers, uh, darker colors uh, helping to represent um, VG and the lighter colors representing VD, we see that VG is uh, higher and larger uh, than VD, uh, VG being the dark color and VD being the sky blue color. Uh, and so, uh, again, it emphasizes that um, if VG is bigger than VD, then the gas bulk velocity of the gas is helping to accelerate the droplet out of the combustion chamber. We can do the same analysis with N-heptane. And N-heptane is given by the chemical formula of 7 carbons and 16 hydrogen. Uh, using and we are using the same oxidizer, uh, liquid oxygen. The chamber parameters stay the same, uh, except we'll change LCC to be 0.725 meters. Uh, the inlet conditions stay the same, uh, including D knots ranging from 30 to 200 micron, except we'll change uh, TG, the inlet uh, temperature, to be 801 Kelvin. Uh, we'll also run a fuel rich. Uh, overall, so phi overall is 2.3. Here are the results. We see that all, for all D knots, that at least for the ones that we've chosen, uh, the liquid droplets all evaporate away uh, and none of them survive or reach uh, beyond the halfway point. This uh, plot of TG versus X tells us that for N-heptane, at least for the D-NOTs that we've chosen, there are huge uh, temperature gradients near the front of the combustion chamber, early on in the combustion chamber length, and so they can easily melt our injection plate. This plot of VD versus X uh, tells us that relative to methane, uh, it appears that the droplets aren't um, sped up very much. 
here I overlaid a plot of TG versus X and Fiji uh, versus X. Uh, wanted to again show that for Fiji uh, near and below one, uh, that stoichiometric re reaction, uh, we have uh, TG reach its maximum. So for example, for the two solid lines that represent uh, D naught equals 200, uh, that purple, thin purple line, when it's near one, uh, around 0 0.05 uh, meters, then uh, the big, uh, thick, solid, uh, dark blue line uh, above um, representing TG reaches its maximum. And again, we see for D naught, uh, for at least for 30 to 200 micron, there, there are huge uh, temperature gradients um, near the front of the combustion chamber, which could pose, which does pose a problem. Uh, I overlaid a plot of VG and MVD versus X uh, for N heptane, and we see that while initially when VG is bigger than uh, VD, uh, we see that VD is accelerated out of the combustion chamber, but we see for uh, D naught for many of these cases, um, VD, uh, the speed of the droplet is then becomes bigger than the speed of the uh, gas, and the droplet um, becomes decelerated within the combustion chamber. The references I want to point out, of course, there's uh, Huzel and Huang and Sutton and Bill Blaris as classic texts for uh, rocket um, propulsion and rocket propulsion uh, design. Uh, the text I want to point out uh, that was useful for uh, liquid uh, droplet models, the simple liquid droplet models, is from Stefan Turns, An Introduction to Combustion Concepts and Applications. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, I relied heavily upon Cantera and it is fantastic uh, open source uh, software package for um, use in chemical kinetics, ther uh, thermodynamic processes, transport processes, uh, and in this particular case, uh, combustion. I also want to point out that um, for heptane, I needed to obtain a Chemkin-like uh, data file uh, that wasn't included in Cantera. Uh, and uh, you know to calculate um, the reaction mechanism for n-heptane, and that was obtained. I was looking through uh, Google Groups uh, for Cantera um, users, uh, and a user named uh, Oku Nyong uh, pointed out this uh, paper from Luang Luo Du Cheng Yu, and that uh, user also provided the. Uh, CTI or a Kempkin file uh, for n-heptane. Uh, and I've also put it on uh, GitHub in that same repository that I showed before. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. J. Paul uh, of JPL because um, over the past months uh, I've learned a lot about uh, liquid rocket um, engine design from him and also um, uh, the Caltech class of uh, AE121 AB uh, because I learned a lot from sitting in on the class with students and I learned a lot from the students in, in the class that I'm auditing, um, AE121. Uh, thank you for listening. And um, again, um, you know, I want to thank uh, Dr. J. Polk and the students of uh, AE121B, AB. Uh, and remember, the mission is to Mars because nobody really wants to go back to Jakub.